Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here. This week we're going big. That's right, big trains. G scale, for example. <laughs> Today we're going to take a look at the installation process of what it takes to install a TSU 4400 into this USA Trains GP38 as we get ready for the National Garden Railway Convention in Denver this June. So hopefully we'll see you there, but for the now, let's get started. So the first step as any model, we have to take it apart. Now on the underside of this model, I've already removed the 12 screws that hold the body shell onto the chassis. Now they're paired up all the way across, including two, under, two pairs under the fuel tank that you have to remove. So once that's removed, we then simply lift the body shell off to reveal all the electronics that are inside. Now, one of the things we look at is we've got some of these connectors in here. Now you will notice some of them I have taken apart already. Just kind of getting an idea of what we're doing. And we want to identify and trace the wires to find out what all the purposes are. Now this particular circuit board up here in the front controls the smoke unit. Now on this particular installation, I'm not going to install the smoke unit just right now. I may put, come back in and put it in later, but for now we're going to go ahead and remove the smoke unit out of the circuit. But now we also have this circuit board back here, and this is the one that we're going to replace with our TSU 4400. Now underneath the model body shell, you will see two circuit boards, one for the front lights and one for the rear lights. Now on this particular model, as I mentioned, I've already removed some of it, so you'll see a circuit board similar to this. Now there are two screws that hold it in place on the inside top of the shell so that all the LEDs line up. Now as it seems to become common more and more today, I'm not really sure why, but this circuit board uses a common negative light output. And what that means is it's backwards to everything DCC uses, which is a common V+. Now, the reason that's important is because an LED, when connected backwards, actually will not illuminate, even if you have all the wiring correct. It just will not illuminate. So what we have to do is we have to address the lighting on this circuit board. Now, to do that, we can do one of a couple of different things. We can cut some traces so that we insulate each of the positive and negative leads from the common traces. Now we can scrape off the epoxy covering to reveal the bare trace where we can solder wires to. Now in this particular case, you notice that our headlight, or in this case the rear, the rear light, is actually attached by wires. So I could simply desolder the wires, reverse the polarity, and resolder them in. The same with these two LEDs right here, which indicate and illuminate the number boards. The challenge is gonna be these lights right here, these LEDs are for the class lights, and they are a red-green class light. Now, in the real world, we've discussed class lights in the past. Typically, they're gonna be clear for an extra, they're gonna be green for a scheduled train indicating a following section, or extinguished on a regular scheduled train. The only time they would be red is if they were pushing on the rear end of a train. So you can decide to reuse these or find a way to wire them up, or you can replace them with a common anode green-red LED, which you can find online. So in this case, I'm actually going to replace these LEDs with clear LEDs that I will wire up and stick into the light housing with wires going back to the decoder similar to what I've done in a lot of the HO models. Now next up we want to talk about is the power consumption and the motor handling. Now on these USA trains you actually have two motors. You have one motor in the front and one motor in the rear. Now when we take apart these wires we do a ohms meter re resistance test so that we can determine stall current. Remember the video where we discussed stall current. So when I measured the ohm impedance across there, I got six ohms. Now if we plug that into Ohm's law, with a 24 volt system, we actually come up with actually a four amp stall current, but that's just one motor. So when we put the second motor running in parallel, we actually come up with three ohm impedance. So now again, we plug that into Ohm's law, you'll see that we actually now have an eight amp stall current, which is way higher than what the four amp decoder is designed to do. Now, what we're going to do to solve this problem is we're actually going to wire the motors in series. 
So what that's going to do is that's going to be 6 ohms from the front motor and 6 ohms from the rear motor equaling 12 ohms total of resistance. Now we plug that into the same ohms law with a 24 volt system, we actually get a 2 amp stall current instead of the 8 amp stall current, which is much better. Now the benefit is that your model is going to run significantly slower. So the catch is if you're trying to consist it or run it with a single motor equipped model, you may have to go in and build a custom speed table. But since most of the time we're typically not running faster than 50% throttle anyway, you can actually max out at about 50%. So you still get your full speed range, it's just over a shorter distance of the throttle. The last thing is we have track power pickups coming from your front and rear trucks. We're going to attach those into the decoder and the left and right rail track pickups. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this installation. I'm going to show you the work, pictures of the work here as we go, and we'll see the finished product. Hey guys, got this all buttoned up here, so we're going to take it for a test spin. But before we do that, I'm going to share with you a little bit of the stuff that we did inside the model before we got it put together. Now, you guys have seen me do installations in the past, so rather than bore you with a wire-for-wire -wire installation, I figured I'd give you an overview of what I found while I was going through the process. First off, as you guys know, with USA Trains, the motors are actually embedded inside the trucks. Now, we have a front and rear truck. Now, they're actually mounted 180 degrees off from each other. And what that means is that the two trucks, they're built exactly the same, but installed in the model like this. So that means the red and black wires are actually opposite from front and rear. So when you're wiring in, especially track pickup, you wanna make sure that the front red wire for the right rail on the front truck is actually tied to the black wire on the right rail on the rear truck and vice versa for the other side. So when you're wiring these up, it'll look odd because you're gonna have red and black wires going into left rail and right rail terminals. Now the other thing I found was because the trucks are mounted 180 degrees from each other, the motors then actually run opposite. So if you take red and black polarity and match it up, red and black together, they're going to be running opposite. So in order to wire these motors in series, you're going to take the red wire for the V plus on the front motor and actually tie it directly to the red wire on the rear motor, which is now V minus because it's going to be turning in the opposite direction. So then, your red and so then your two black wires are actually going to go to your motor plus and your motor minus. And that's how you're going to wire these in series. Now the last hurdle I found was when wiring in all of the lights, these models implement a common V minus negative. And we've seen how we've attracted this in the past. Sometimes we've replaced the PCB, other times we can switch the LEDs. Well in this particular case, all but one LED was actually mounted in such a way that I could just desolder it, flip it around, and resolder it to the circuit board. So the circuit boards now have a common V plus, and then the V minus is wired individually through the resistors and then directly to the decoder for the various function outputs. Now the catch or the change that I had to make was for the class lights on the front and the rear, because these were actually using a red-green LED bipolar which used a common V minus. Now, as you know, we can't do that in DCC. So we were faced with two choices. We would have to order some common anode LEDs, which would be red green, but I decided to go ahead and just replace that with a clear white LED and attach the V plus to the common lead and then the other one only using one color. The reason I chose that was because of the way we've talked about in the past how class lights work. Typically, especially in a model of this era, pretty much everything was designated as an extra and so you would only really see clear. A green light indicated a scheduled following train and then a red was actually for pusher units on the rear. Neither of those would be used all that often, so in order to be able to demonstrate the light, I just replaced them with a white LED. Now I used our 810-134 golden white LED and wired them up into the class light housings. Now in order to make sure they were centered over the circuit board, I bent the leads so that they were angled and fit right into the housings. So after all of that, got everything wired up together. As I mentioned, the resistors were already on the little circuit boards. So let's take a look and see what it sounds like. Now, warning, 
I will tell you that I've already tested this and I have turned the volume down significantly. This is at a master volume of 50 out of 255 where the default is 196. Otherwise, I blow out our mics. So let's take a listen. We're gonna go ahead and connect track power. You hear that low pressure alarm bell turn on. And I have also selected the EMD 645 non-turbo prime mover. Doesn't that sound awesome? And we can hear that compressor kick on and standing in the room, you can almost feel that compressor kicking in with that low frequency. So what does it sound like? Let's blow the quick short horn. You can hear how nice and loud it is. And remember, that's a master volume of 50 out of 255. So let's go ahead and get it moving. So we're gonna move at speed step 10. I've added a little bit of momentum so you can get some time to see it and hear it move. But with only a few feet of track here, and especially this large scale, I can only move just a little bit. So we'll move backwards. Now we'll bring it to a stop. Now on this model we had several lights. Of course there's the headlight as you can see here indicated on the front of the locomotive. Now I've also added the class lights onto function 24 which is our FX3 lighting output and you can see that I've actually already programmed through an on off dimmable but I've set that dim light pretty low so that you can see that they're on but not so much they look like headlights. And then the last I'll show you here is our number boards. So I've actually got the number boards wired into FX3. So when I turn on function 26, you can see that the number boards illuminate. Now, there are six lighting effects on here. So you can do front and rear class lights together. You can actually wire up those bicolored LEDs if you so choose. But again, it takes a little bit of work. So take your time and be sure to check your wiring. Now, for more information, please visit our website at Soundtracks.com to check out the TSU 4400 and all the cool things that we sell in addition in the Tsunami 2 product line and with our accessories. And with that, we'll see you guys at the National Garden Railway Convention held this June in Denver, Colorado.